my earlier interaction with arts, you know, was just like, you know, every, you know, kid growing up, you know, making marks on the wall, <laughs> you know. Growing with that, I, you know, I see it as nothing but what I find myself doing, you know, all the time. And then when that, you know, conscious decision, you know, comes, so it wasn't any other thing but the art. I'm inspired by the society and what happens around me, you know, personal experiences, some, you know, dialogue between, you know, my peers and this and that, you know, my position on, on things, you know, I, you know, channel that into my creation and, and it works for me. I remember getting a space in front of my, my mom's, you know, abandoned store. You know, so I turned it to a studio in the house then, you know. Then I was in the high school. And then um, there is um, a consular, you know, that lives on my street then, still living there. You know, saw me and was like, I should see him at home. And I was like, what are you doing here? You are not supposed to be laughing with everybody, you know, sitting out there and this thing. You are special, you are different. You two want to go to school, I said, I'm preparing to go to school. He said, no, we are going to school tomorrow. And he drove me to Yaba Tech. And, you know, so that's how I got into, you know, tertiary institution, you know, to study arts, like, you know, studying arts. My parents, you know, respect me a lot, you know, as artists today, you know. And, you know, maybe when I was, you know, learning, when I was in school, they were like, ah, this thing, you are not working in an office. And, but when they begin to see that, okay, the result of my focus, you know, then, because they will tell me, okay, I'll tell them I'm doing this thing, I know what I'm doing. In fact, when I was, Getting into the college, I asked my dad not to bother about my school fees and everything that I'll, I'll take care of myself. This is how it happens, you know, so everything, you know, comes out spontaneously, then it begins to define itself. So that is when they speak to me, like, you know, they begin to define themselves, then I begin to recognize, okay, this is uh, a nail, this is the ankle, this is looking like hand, oh, okay, it's taking a position. But now I already know what it is. But in relation to the works, especially the fat ladies, you know, I've been able to break the rules of proportion. Like, so if you look closely to many of them, so you see that, you know, they have tiny head, you know, the feet are not, you know, balanced, you, you know, Yes, one fit is bigger than the other, and, but the most interesting part of it is when you look at them, you see it as a great. As a Muslim, I personally don't, you know, bring those things together. The religion, you know, teach us is like, don't, you know, lower your gaze, don't go looking at, you know, other women or another women. I'm not doing any of that now. But, but if my study, <laughs> requires that I would do it. At the point in my career, you know, being a father, a husband and a responsible one, you know, so um able to 
live like a separate life, you know, from my arts and, you know, the family. So when I'm in my house, I don't have any of my arts. I don't have anything that I want to quickly walk or sketch. When I'm home, I'm home like a husband and a father. My name is Moina Takimboli, but now I'm Mrs. Utsman. I'm a mother of two, two boys. So I have, I have three, three boys that I'm raising now. Two small boys and one big boy. <laughs> so I have my better half. He's actually a good guy, very caring, loving, good father to the kids. Always helping us with almost everything at home. Like anything I'm unable to like put together, if I call him, even if he's not around, if I call him immediately, find solution to it, even when he's not around. Sometimes I, you know, I spend like two days here, you know. Sometimes, you know, I work late if I have to go home sometimes and I don't necessarily need to resume 8 o'clock here. So it's a very flexible, you know, routine for me. And I'm able to carry my partner along, like, you know, she knows what I'm doing, you know, she knows when I need to be here for two days and three days. So I can see I have my kitchenette and <laughs> this thing. So I'm not missing anything. So when I'm here, I'm not missing home. And when I'm home, I don't want to miss here. I make my living, you know, from, you know, selling my art. So I have a gallery that represents me, Sapa Contemporary in New York. So when I have, you know, few galleries that we do projects, you know, from time to time. Art in Africa is something that is, um, you know, taking shape, you know, and there's a lot of vibration about, you know, African contemporary art, you know, now, and the rest of the world, you know, are looking into, you know, African art now. In a place like Lagos, Nigeria, you know, people, you know, are beginning to, you know, waking up, you know, collecting art, you know, as an investment and, you know, for the love of it as well, you know. So, and it's something that is still growing. This is the most interesting part of my creation, like the process. These are the part I enjoy, you know, most, you know, in my practice. So if you ask me that, ah, which one do you like? Which one is your favorite? I'll tell you, I don't have any favorite, you know, of my piece. <laughs> 